Well, as you can see with the hat and the coat, it's another cold day here this winter. Uh, I'm ready to take this thing out of the clamps now. And to give you an idea of also what I do here. Is when I have the leftover epoxy, remember we're starting making a clamp, so I've got half of a one half of one half of a big one done, and then I was able to uh, finish up another two smaller ones now that I can add in my, my stack of, of clamps that I've been building with this boat. You can see the black I was using when I had some extra left over when I did the ring on the inside of the hull. So <laughs> if you see the colors and the change in the wood, you know exactly what you just built. So I'm going to go ahead and take this thing out of the uh, clamps now. And pull off the rest of them and then we'll come back and we'll start the shaping of this thing get off the uh, excess epoxy that's flowed out and stuck down so because this will be uh, cleaned up and then stained and then epoxy coated over the top of it so you know even with the clamps it's not that heavy so let me come back I've got most of the of the uh, rough stuff taken down first with my big plane then I've come along with my little low angle plane fine tuning and get in and into some of these smaller places, but also make be certain uh, that you uh, take your square along and as you're playing down and you're maintaining your square. Uh, I'm happy with this. Now I'll start, I'll flip it over and work on the bottom side, but probably before I do, I'll go ahead and start shaping uh, the roundness into the top here. So, Basically, it's just some more of the one on the edge, but I think I'll use my rasp on that instead. Now I got my my rasp I got from Chuck down in Duckworks. I'll just use it to preliminarily dress up on the edges. steady. The other thing you want to do is break out your wire gauge and go along and just, just see how smooth and even you are from side to side. And then you can see down in here I got more of a bevel from my plane so I need some more rasping down in there. So let me come back when I get a little bit more done. On the bottom side here, uh, because of the curve it almost makes it impossible for the planes to function along without the blade sticking out so far because of the the arch so try to keep the rest flat long strokes and eventually you will tire it out. Another thing you want to do is to take your cabinet scraper out. And scrape off all of those bits of uh, epoxy that squeeze out the dribble on everything because we want to uh, clean this up for staining. So, pretty much, ah, yeah, pretty much done. They were all smoothed down. Let me, I'll go over it with the uh, sander now and find any other little little spots that need to be need to be fixed but it's pretty much done I gotta square up the end yet and do some touch up and fine sand and then stain it and it doesn't weigh much at all so 
Because remember we put it on here to clamp it down so it's it's straight and then sight it down it and then uh, do any adjustments you need to do on the radiuses or whatever. Remember if it looks good at 10 feet that's fine. Somebody's up here looking oh yeah you gotta you know it's not a rifle barrel that some TI is going to look down the barrel to see if there's any rust inside. So onward and upward. I've got it clamped on temporarily. I'll probably go ahead and just late in the day. I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave this up here, but I wanted to let you see how it is. It may seem like it has a lot of arc in it, but you want to be certain that when you get over to the gunnels, you have some clearance and you're not dragging your knuckles over them when you have to make a quick turn. So. But if you have it down here like that, it can't go any farther than that, which may be a, a good thing, too. So I'll, I'll debate about this until I actually drill the hole. But one of the things on the angle, on those spacers inside, uh, you want to get the angle right so that when the tiller is down, I get this bottom edge here on the inside of the tiller is uh, pressed up tight against the, uh, the rudder then it's, uh, you're not going to have any wobbling, it's always going to be the same height. And then you ah, i got to adjust that to kick it up if you need to. So, until then, I've got the rudder, or the tiller, stained, and I've got the whole board through for the, uh, the tiller and the rudder the combination for when I paint the rudder. Now we're going to work on my uh, dagger board, and uh, <laughs> that's my drawing. It doesn't take me much to build something. Okay, what I've done now is I've laid out all the pieces that I'm going to use because well, you can't see it on this thing. I've got all my spacers and my distances back and thicknesses and things. And I've got them placed on here on the bottom piece. And I've used two pieces. There's no use in, in uh, you know, I could have cut out another piece but sometimes you don't have the grain growing, the, the grain going the right direction. And I wanted longitudinal or the, the grain going up and down in the sheets of plywood. So I've got these two pieces for the full thickness, the full width, four and a half cord of the dagger board for the center part. I've got them pin nailed down to a, a piece of a board underneath that's clamped to the top of my uh, workbench here. And I've used my, my level to make sure it's straight that way and that it's flat this way all the way along. So I'm happy with that. So now I've got this piece. I can go ahead and epoxy in place. And it's a little light on width. So I've got a couple pieces of narrower plywood, quarter inch plywood that I'll fill in behind them. I'm not worried about this thing flexing because of the joint in the middle. Uh, there's going to be so many pieces epoxied on that uh, it's going to be like one big brick. Uh, if you were concerned about that, I guess, on this joint underneath the next layer of plywood here, you could put down a layer of glass and wet out the glass and then put the uh, plywood down on top of a layer of glass. Uh, give you some more strength and maybe some uh, sleep easier at night. So let me go ahead and start uh, lathering some of this stuff and we'll get back to it. This will be another one of those one coat uh, thick coats that will spread out with the, uh, the small teeth. Because once you have nice furrows, even furrows along, there's more than enough there to uh, spread out, dry into the, soak into the wood, and then leave you a uh, bond between uh, layers. So we'll come back.